action. One of the things that I wanted to show you, because I talked about it earlier, is the red wax. And why do we use the red wax? Okay. Well, here's the perfect example. This wing is this wing. And the reason why the wing has all this beautiful detail in the feathers is because you can do that with red wax and you cannot do it with clay. So as irritating as it is, uh, this is a wonderful product when you're working this size. The, the smaller descending, which you can see, uh, when the larger piece is there, the details are not so much of a problem. When you get down to this size and you have to work very small, especially on the face, the rows, and the wings, it has to be wax. And this wax is not just any wax. It uh, is a combination of four different types that uh, Piero has made for 40 years for all of the work that, uh, that we do together. So uh, as much as I hate it, I got to love it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. There we go. Action. I thought I would show you this uh, because it gives you a sense of the the, the volume and uh, the incredible smoothness that you can create uh, with the red wax. But I do have to say there is uh, the dark side of this stuff. And that is, it is uh, created in such a fine band, so as the temperature changes, so does the wax and so does your ability to work with it. If you're working in Florence, which I did for many years in October, when it turns cold and wet. The wax is so hard that you have to keep it heated over a Bunsen burner all the time and then move it in your hands like this. After two days, you have blisters on your fingers and you have no hair on your hand because you burned it off over the Bunsen burner. By late afternoon, the sun comes out, gets a bit warmer. Now the wax is too easy to work with and you can't get the nice sharp details that you need to finish the piece. So the end result is you've got to have two or maybe three sculptures working at the same time. Morning detail, afternoon, more large volume areas that you can put on and smooth out the following morning when it's cold again. So that way you don't lose work time. You just keep on working and the stuff sort of changes as the day goes along. Go. When you get to this size of sculpture, things uh, change technically a little bit because uh, at, this, at this size to do this all in uh, the red wax is enormously time consuming to build up this kind of volume and make it smooth. So here the technique is a bit different. What we do is the detailed areas where you want nice crisp lines like in the face and the hair here in the wings, you can see lots of detail. Those are made out of red wax. So, and the rest of the body, which is large, smooth volume, is made out of gesso or plaster. So it can be sanded and made extremely smooth, and that helps with the finishing in the raw metal. What's interesting about that is that when you're trying to compositionally make a work of art, and the face is red, the wings are red, the feet are red, and the rest is white. It is very, very difficult to look at that and see compositionally what's going on. This particular sculpture has the advantage that it is an asymmetrical composition that works very well. You've got all of the uh, details, wing, headdress, all on one side, and then the other side of the body is a nice, smooth, curvilinear line. So this one was not so difficult to see. When they get very complicated, and you've got blotches of red mixed with white, and you're trying to see whether uh, everything is the right size and the right proportion, it gets a bit complicated. So you really need to keep your, your focus uh, as a lot of artists do, you leave in the evening, you have no idea what you have. You have about 15 seconds first thing in the morning when you walk up there and you see the piece with a fresh eye and you can say, ah, yes, or this is a little too long, 
the wing should go up further down here. And then again, it all goes away and you just have to go on uh, kind of instinct uh, through the rest of the day. So this piece now has a traditional patina, Florentine patina. The reason for that is there are clients, when you get to pieces this size, that prefer this, especially if it's going outdoors, to the contemporary patinas, which are normally used more indoors. Um, so this one, I believe, is going to uh, Holland, a more Florentine traditional uh, location. And uh, the other one, which we're going to see, which is a similar size, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to change the patina and give it a nice contemporary patina. So we'll take a look at that one now. Okay, very nice. Now, what I'm going to do here is... I didn't turn her all the way around. No. I... Sorry. <laughs> that hurt. What hurt? Oh. Hang on, let me... Uh... No sound, no, no sound, no, no sound, no. Okay, action. Uh, this sculpture was called for years the Little Angel because she was about 19 inches tall, about like that, uh, for years. And uh, then we decided that she would be very, very interesting at a larger size. So it seems simple enough. You've got it all worked out at a small size, you blow it up to a larger size. But as you go up to a larger size, especially when you're getting close to a human size, so you're seeing a human face that is uh, the size of a normal human face, things begin to change a little bit. So we had to make numerous adjustments in the figure in order to make it work larger. And this is always the, the situation uh, as you go large. If it gets really large, of course, you have the other dynamic, and you see this in cathedrals all over the world, where you have pieces up on the first tier of saints, but you have to look up at them. Now, the sculptors have adjusted the head size and shoulder size, so it looks proportionately correct. But if the piece was standing down in front of you, it would be considerably distorted. This is subtle distortions to make a better finished piece of sculpture. So let's just take a look at her and then I will tell you that tomorrow I'm going to do another one with the light patina, the contemporary patina that I've used for many of the smaller pieces um, as this one also is going to a client that prefers this for uh, the outdoors. But I do want to say one thing about uh, the construction of the piece. This was done exactly the same way as the, uh, the other large piece. Plaster, or gesso for the body, and red wax for the wings, the face, the hands, and the feet. We were working against a, a, a huge uh, um, workload and limitation of time because Piero uh, that, that helps me with these, he flew over from Italy, he had a certain amount of time to be here, I had a certain amount of time, I flew from Spain, we're both in Berkeley, we're working very hard to finish uh, several of these large pieces and we get to the end and she was the last one and we thought okay we actually have finished all seven pieces this year. And we were very, very pleased with ourselves. And I went downstairs to get a cup of coffee. I went back up into the studio. And I looked at her. And much to my horror, her left breast was smaller than her right breast. Now you would say, OK, well, you just fix it. There's a bit of a problem. The wax which we use to do the details 
Piero brings from Italy because it, for some reason, cannot be made here. It has to do with the beeswax that he uses or some combination. But whatever it is, we tried and it just doesn't work. So he brings slabs of the red wax with him so that we can do the detailed areas. So you get something nice like this, the textured area against the smooth area, which was the gesso. Now, we're out of red wax. And we need red wax to solve this problem. So we looked around. We thought maybe there was some red wax in the wax room somewhere else. And ultimately, we went into the small last lion that we had already cast and the red wax was still there. Didn't take long to decide. We needed just about that much red wax. So I carefully cut the paws off of the lion in the small model, made the red wax, corrected the breast, and everything was perfect. Now, some people know this as the little angel. She's not anymore. I know her as the angel with the lion paws because that's what finished her before we left.